Welcome back. The Olivetti M280 is still sitting on the bench beside me. This is part three of our look at this machine. In the first part, we got it up and running. Last time in part two, we fixed the keyboard. This time though, we get to have some fun with it. We're going to stick in a couple of upgrades, starting with some additional memory. Upgrading memory is usually nothing more than installing a couple of sims. But as you can see on that ISA backplane, well, there's nowhere to put them. And if we flip the machine over to expose the motherboard, well, there's no SIM slots in here either. Rather, the memory is all in this area. One megabyte of RAM from the factory. It's all those chips. So if there's no SIM slots and the motherboard already has its maximum one megabyte of RAM installed, well, how are we going to get some more in there? That's where this card comes into play. The AST Rampage 286. As the name suggests, this was designed for a 286 system, just like the one we have on the bench. Originally intended for the IBM AT, well, this machine is an AT clone after all, so let's see if this will work in there. Just take a second to appreciate how ridiculously awesome this card looks. That is an awful lot of memory chips. I sort of hope it works because troubleshooting nine times one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Troubleshooting 72 of these 256K by one byte chips. Well, that might take a while. I haven't tested this card, so I don't know if it will work. But I think what we should do in the first instance is pull out the manual for it. And you see these two switch blocks? Let's try and figure out how this card was configured for the last time it was used. The memory on this card can be configured in multiple different ways and it all depends on how much you already have in your computer. For our system, it has one megabyte of RAM on its motherboard. So all of this is going to be set up as extended memory. The memory in the computer, well, the first 640K, that's known as conventional memory. The next 384K, taking you up to one megabyte, that would be known as expanded memory. And then everything above that is extended. Now, this card has four banks of RAM. Each one contains 512K. It only needs 16 of the chips to do that. The other two will be for parity. So with 512, one megabyte, 1 1.5, and two megabytes of RAM. If, for example, your computer only had, say, 512K of memory on the motherboard, well, it is possible to configure this card to fill out that conventional memory to 640, first of all. It can then also fill out the 384K of the expanded memory. And then you would have, say, 1.5 megabytes left for extended. This card, in fact, would have came from the factory with just the 512 populated here in bank zero. It is a model number RAMP 286-512, after all. But that's also confirmed because these chips are all Texas Instrument 120 nanosecond parts from 1987. The rest of it, though, they're all Samsung chips, 150 nanosecond parts, so slightly slower, but obviously still within the spec required for this card. There's no uh, date stamp on these chips, none that I can see anyway. It just says 707 on it. But regardless of that, let's see if we can figure out, first of all, how this card was last used. It's configured by means of these two dip switches. And then we'll just reconfigure these so that we can have the full two megabytes of RAM as extended memory. And if we pull out the manual, which in itself totals a couple of hundred pages, so we're not going to read all of it. But if we jump down to this section, switch setting summary, and look at this table here. 
that tells us that switch block one, the first four switches on that are used to determine how much memory you have installed in your RAM page 286. Now considering that this is fully populated, you would expect that to be set to two megabytes. But switch one is on and then two, three and four are off. And that would suggest that there's only one megabyte of memory installed. To have this set for two megabytes installed, all four of those should be off as per this bottom setting here. So that makes me wonder, is there maybe a problem on this card above one megabyte? Do we perhaps have a bad memory chip and someone has just disabled the memory above one megabyte to prevent any problems. But we'll get to that when we're testing it. So moving on down, the next four switches, five through eight, they define the base address of this card, which in its standard default setting should be on, 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 off. Although for us, it is off, on, off, off. So someone has changed the default base address of this card. It does suggest in the manual here to only change it if you have multiple of these cards installed in any one system. So perhaps that is where this came from. Perhaps whatever computer had this had multiple Rampage 286 memory expansions in it. So someone had to change that base address or perhaps they just had some other card installed that was conflicting with it. Pin 9, that is the dual page mode and it recommends to leave that enabled, which it is. And then switch 10, as far as I can figure out anyway, well, it doesn't do anything. Moving over to switch block 2 though. Well, this one determines how much memory you already have in your computer so that the ROM page card knows where to address all of this. So we have on, 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 off, on, off, on, albeit it is only switches one through seven that control this. So let me see if I can find the corresponding layout in that table. And there we are. It would appear that whatever machine this was installed in originally only had 640k because it is set on, 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 off, on, off, just like that. Switch number eight on switch block two. That just enables or disables the parity checking. It is currently left enabled and that's the way it is recommended to leave it. So what we need to do to put this into our machine, we need to change switch block two to tell this card that there is already one megabyte installed. And you can see there, whoever owned this manual before they scanned it, well, that was presumably the setup that they had because it put a little X here beside 1024K. So we need to set this on, 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 off, on, on, on. Just like that. I'm going to change the address of the card back to the default. So switches five through eight on switch block one. I need to change that to on, 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 off, just like that. And because we have two megabytes on this card, let's just change switches one through four to reflect that as well. And all of them should be off. And let's see if it works. So we'll just put it into a spare ISA slot. I'll not bother putting the screw back in at this stage, just in case there's a problem and we need to pull it out again. Power on. So it's counting its base memory, 640K, counting the extended memory. This BIOS just calls everything above 640 extended and it's counted past the 384, which was the total on the motherboard. Although it stopped there at a grand total of two megabytes. That's not right. Does give us an extended memory size error. So perhaps we need to jump into the BIOS and set that manually. So expansion memory size. 
could set here as 384, but we need to increase that to 2432. That's the 2 megabytes of the Rampage 286 plus the 384 that is on the motherboard. Let's see what it does this time. So it counts up the base memory again and starts counting the extended memory. And it has a memory error. At that address it wrote FFFF and it read back FFFE. Now it is at that point in which it stopped reading memory previously. Is there a fault on our Rampage card? Because that number, 1408 kilobytes, well that is the 384k on the motherboard plus one megabyte on the Rampage card. And you'll remember that the switch block was set to only recognize one megabyte of the memory on this card. Let's change that switch block back so that it is only seeing one megabyte. We'll need to change the settings in the BIOS, but let's just do that and see if the machine will pass its memory test. And to set this to one megabyte, Switch 1 on switch block 1, we need to turn that on. Now I am expecting this to throw another error here, because we have limited the RAM page to 1 megabyte, but the CMOS is still going to try and check for 2 megabyte total. And yes, we have another error message. Although, that's interesting, it is at the same address. This time I tried to write 0000, but it's reading back FFFF, -F -F, almost as if I tried to write that. Um, it's reading back from an address that doesn't exist. Well, it doesn't exist now because we have disabled it. So we'll just press F1 to continue, and then we'll use that setup program to limit the BIOS to looking for one megabyte of total additional memory. So G setup. Let's change this to 1408, so that is the 384 that's on the motherboard above 640, plus the 1 megabyte that we now have enabled solely on the ROM page card. And with this reset, I'm just expecting everything to work. So this should count up and give us a total of 2 megabytes as in 1 megabyte on the motherboard, 1 megabyte on the RAM page. And yes, that is what it has done. No error messages, that is working. But it does make me think that we have a fault on our RAM page 286. And possibly it's just as simple as a bad memory chip. And I would hazard a guess that it's probably in bank. Two, you would imagine that it's going to start with bank 0 and bank 1. It tries to count above 1 megabyte. That would be going into bank 2. That's where it encounters a problem. So that's where I think we possibly have a bad chip. I think we've got a bad chip somewhere in bank 2. But here's an idea. What about if we took all of those out and swapped them? with all the ones here in bank 3. Assuming of course that they are all okay. But if we do that, swap all of those for all of those, will our problem move? Now if we set the memory on the card back to 2 megabytes total, it ran into the error when it's tried to read past 1 megabyte. But if we move those chips over here, Will it run into the error then when it tries to read past one and a half megabytes of additional memory? Only one way to find out. And yes, I still cannot find my proper chip lifting tool. I have no idea where it is, so I'll just have to order a replacement. So bank two and bank 3 out. 
let's put all of bank 3 into position 2 here on the board. And then put all of these back into bank 3 with the theory being that the fault that's it possibly in one of these or that I think is in one of these will move with them into bank 3 from bank 2. And then with the card back in here and set to 2 megabytes again let's just see how far it gets in its counting this time. So 1408 is where it would have stopped and it continues on. This time it has counted a total of 1920 kilobytes extended memory. And that 1920k less the 348 that's on the motherboard. Well that is one and a half megabytes. That would be banks 0, 1 and 2 working. The fault that was in bank 2 has seemingly moved over to bank 3. So it would appear that our problem is one of those memory chips. One of them must be bad. I just want to set this again to a total of 2 megabytes expected on our card. And if we reset, I just want to see where the error occurs. Is it right at 1920? Or does it try to count anything beyond that before it throws a problem? No, it is right at that point. So just as it's going into bank 3 and tries to write to that address, trying to write FFFF and it's reading back FFFD. And it's the same sort of problem as we've seen before at the memory address where it fails. It is the last bit that is read back incorrectly. Right, well we know there's a problem in here somewhere. But let's try and narrow it down. I think what we'll do this time is we'll swap them again. But we'll just do it one row at a time. And hopefully through the process of elimination we'll be able to narrow it down to, well, two of the chips anyway. Let me test the first row and see if that makes any difference. So no, the problem wasn't in that top row, but on the second row, swap those over. And you can see that our error now occurs at 1408k again. That is straight into bank 2, at the start of bank 2. Remember the motherboard has a 384 on it. So it's 384 plus 1024 of the card. It gives the 1408. The problem has moved back to bank 2. So it has to be one of the two chips on the second row. And I suppose, does that make sense? Those top two chips, maybe those are for parity. The next set of chips down, that's the start of the actual memory that's in use. And our fault here is being seen at the start of each of the banks. That's my theory anyway. So we've got one of those two chips is bad. I need to try and find a spur. So it either has to be that chip or that chip is bad. And I'm hoping it's just one of them, not both of them. I do have a couple of spurs, although I can only find one spur chip here that is the same speed, 150 nanosecond. So which one do you think it'll be? These both have the same part number on them. The bottom line is slightly different though. That one says 705. That one says 707. Let's just try this one first, will we? Old chip out and new chip in. Now I have no reason to believe that the new one won't work. Although I suppose I haven't tested it either. I did pick up this lot of chips from eBay quite a while ago. Most of it is just 7.4 series logic. Although there was some memory chips in this bottom bit. 
and despite the fact that some of these look a little bit rough any of the ones that I've used from it so far have all been good. So let's get this in the machine and see if that fixes it. Alright here it goes, it's counting. Well it can pass that 1408. Come on. No. Must be the other one is bad. Okay, swap them over. And this time I'm just expecting it to keep counting. Come on. Yes. So this chip must be bad. And it's counted the total 3 megabytes. Our Rampage 286 is working. So I'm pretty confident that we can now put the screw in. The card works. And the other thing that I want to do is install some of the software that comes with it. I created this wee menu here just to keep the style of what was on this machine originally. But ignore that for now. Let's uh, list the directory. And I've copied everything we need into this RAM page folder. Install. So let our drive containing the boot disk, that's the C drive. What is the video card? It's not a monochrome or a Hercules. It's not a CGA. It is an EGA adapter. It is the installation for this machine. Yes. Testing for expanded memory boards. Um, I think it's crashed. Maybe I was a bit quick putting that screw in. So I've been screwing about with this for a while and not really getting anywhere. Went back to the manual though and check out this here that I've found. Someone has underlined this in red and even put an exclamation mark beside it. To use all of the Rampage 26 memory as expanded memory, set switches 21 through 27 to off. That is this switch block here. Now this is the one that we configured to tell this card how much memory is already in the system. But if I just turn all this off, and if we power up again, you can see we get an error straight away. That's at the end of the extended memory that's on the motherboard. I was trying to write to it and it's reading back nothing. But if we run G setup, well, we can fix that problem by telling the BIOS that, well, there is actually only that 384k of memory. So, okay, that's now fine. But it's showing just total memory 1 megabyte. That is everything on the motherboard. Any of the memory on our Rampage 286, it is not being detected. And if we go into that Rampage folder again and try to install, well, it still crashes. But if I reset and if we manually add the driver for the Rampage card into config.sys, if we manually add that driver in there, say, so device equals C ROM page and it's REMM dot sys. And if we reset again, this time it detects our expansion and starts counting up its memory here. Two megabytes detected and that is all defined as EMS memory. Now we can finally run that installer package and this time it works. The card is detected, there's the IO address for it and we can finally set up some of its features. So fast disk, super drive, 
super spool, and then the memory manager. Well, fast disk, that gives us a RAM disk. We can set one or two of them, limited to 512k each. I think we'll just set up one. Super drive is for adding a virtual floppy drive, a 360k drive. Although to be perfectly honest with you, I can't really think of a situation where you might want that. Super spool, well that's just a print spooler, so we don't need that. AST memory, well we do need this installed, that must be installed to enable this. So we can hit escape, do we want to quit, yes, do we want to save, yes. Now it tells us that we need to copy those files onto our C drive, but we're not going to do that. Instead I can edit config sys again. You can see here though that it has duplicated that line. So we need to remove that one that we put in to get this working. And I'm just going to amend this to tell it where those files are. In fact there's a nice little switch we can add to this, rmm sys slash n that just gives us some more information when it's carrying out its test. So save, exit and reset. Spelt that wrong. A silly mistake to make. Let's try that again. So test is 2 meg on the card. Assigns 512 of that to a new D drive and there is our drive hmm couldn't run the check disk on it how much memory is it using though well quite a bit isn't it 78k of the memory used so I might have to look at installing another memory manager on here and try and uh, put some of this into the high memory Although, let's be honest, I'm not really going to use a 512k RAM disk. Despite how handy it is in the likes of Amiga Land, I don't really see me using it on this system. Let's see if we can create even a text file. Text.text. This is CRG's test text file on RAM disk D. There it is. I wonder will it survive a soft reset? It certainly wouldn't survive a power cycle. Just want to know if it survives a soft reset. Control Alt Delete. I suspect it probably won't. But let's find out. Yeah, nothing. So it is just a RAM disk. The contents of it are only held until the system is powered off or reset. I suppose if I could optimize this to get about 580, 590k free for executable programs, well in that case I would maybe just leave the RAM disk as it is. But if we ram out those two lines, just want to see how much memory is available after a reset. We will lose the RAM disk, but let's just see how much it uses. Alright, so it's still using quite a bit, isn't it? Adding the RAM disk doesn't really take up that much more. 565, that is going to give problems. Running some software. So I will have to have a think about how to better optimize this. I do get the impression though that this is how you're meant to set up this card. It is intended to be EMS memory. So let me see if I can figure out how to free up some more of our conventional memory under DOS. And then I think that will do us. Well, I managed to get it optimized a bit anyway, using a bit of software called QRAM. Managed to free up some more of the conventional memory when I have just over 560k free. Now, I did have to disable Smart Drive to get that much, but don't really need it on this 286 machine, which it's just going to spend its life playing games. But we do still have the RAM disk enabled, drive D. And if we check MEM here, 
there we are 596 k free so that is loads for running any of the dos applications that i would want to speaking of which how about a demo the mega ega demo probably pretty much all we could run on this machine considering its spec one other thing that i do want to add to this system though is a sound card because while that PC speaker is doing its very best there, it does sound absolutely terrible. So I think a period correct card would sit rather nicely in here. How about an Adlib card? I bought a kit. That's what we're going to do next time. Put this together, test it and see what it sounds like. But as for the Rampage 286 memory expansion, well, it's in there, it's set up, eventually it was a bit of an adventure, wasn't it, getting to this stage, but it's done now. Memory management, I'll be honest, is not one of my strong points when it comes to these DOS machines, so if anyone has any suggestions for how to better set this up, please let me know in the comments below. But that is it for this video. So hopefully you enjoyed what you've seen. And if you did, I would appreciate a thumbs up. Why not hit subscribe if you haven't done so already. Still plenty more yet to come here on CRG. And I'll see you next time.